he was super nice and he sent me a couple of heads and that was it. Cool. Rest history. Yeah. Peter has done, man, incredible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, we give a big shout out to Peter, but also I just wanted to extend my thanks to you, man, because without you and the players early on encouraging those guys to do it, maybe they would have just kind of, this would have just been a project they did in their garage. I wish we could have met, Bud. I've heard really wonderful things about him that he was a really great guy. So, yeah, yeah, he was. And that's cool that, you know, I didn't know that, I, you know, that it's perceived that the way that you explained it. That's cool. Yeah, man. Well, I'd love to pass it over to Will. Thank you for joining us for High Action. It means the world to us, Bobby, and that you join us today. Bobby, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going. I'm good. Man, what a what a pleasure to get to hear your insight. And you covered so much in the first half. I I hope you'll indulge me in in just talking about your connection with Archtop Guitars and and you know the 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 way that the literal physical aspect of those guitars affect your playing and your music and like you know we talk about this a lot in in the trio it's like it it brings out a swing just like the arch top the resistance like can can you just talk about you know and i know you play um cane top guitars which are amazing and if you don't mind indulging me in my uh guitar nerd question yeah <laughs> um it's just something that um, I've always felt uh, an affinity for that hollow body guitar. Um, of course, I didn't start off that way. I had solid body guitars in the beginning, but as soon as I uh, understood or you know that I wanted to be a jazz player and I had my uh, models for that. Um, the sound was inherent in the guitar. I mean, you know, everybody had their own sound mm -hmm. character, but the type of guitar sound that I wanted was contained in that hollow body. And so uh, I went out and got, I traded in my Les Paul um, and trade and got a, 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 an Ibanez lawsuit L5 copy with two <laughs> built in pickups. That's the guitar was nice at some you know at so at some point early on i was getting guitars from yamaha and they sounded good to me i mean I, they sounded good to me mm -hmm. it was like i didn't want for any other type of guitar until around 2000 i started to feel like yeah you know there's some qualities in these floating pickup guitars that i kind of want to kind of want that mm -hmm. and so and then I one thing led to another, and I got in touch with Hoffner, Hefner, and um, <laughs> it was like the perfect storm. They were looking to promote their instruments in the states, and you know I, I had some records coming out. They could you know do so. It was perfect, and um, and then I just kind of grad. I wanted more after 15, 10, 15 years of of the Hoffner, I wanted more and uh, started like, so it's been that kind of uh, journey. I think I'm done now with, uh, with Danny Kane top. I mean, that's, yeah, man. when I hear that guitar, it's like, mm -hmm, that's about it right there. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, you can get warmth and, and, and stuff from other guitars from solid body guitars. I never forget being uh, in Berkeley, I think I was still at Berkeley and I saw Mike Stern play. I went yeah. to see him play and he was playing a a uh, Telecaster mm -hmm. thing sounded like. I'm like, dang, you can make that sound like a <laughs> guitar, huh? Mm, okay. But for me, it's always been something about guitar to amp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want it to speed. I want it to sound like that. And then from there, then we can... I, I need to put something in it. It's got to, I guess my fingers have it. But in the beginning, they didn't, not to my ears. It was like, ew, you know, kind of cringeworthy to hear myself play any guitar. <laughs> Man, I, I I love hearing you playing in a, I'm thinking especially of the Monk album. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you, you're playing with a lot of dynamics and I can hear, I can hear you like acoustically digging into the guitar and translating that through the amp. So when you're 
when you're in the shed, do you do you shed with the amp or are you shedding kind of just you and the guitar first and then you're trying to get that same feeling to pass through the amp? Yeah, it, it's it's uh, interesting that you say about the acoustic quality because I hear people say that people have said that a lot to me about, you know, like especially when we're not playing loud in the trio and they mm-hmm. you can hear, uh, you know, I can hear the guitar. You know, like, really? I can't. (laughs) (laughs) I hear the amp, but whatever, you know. So I I don't necessarily calculate or think about um, about it when I'm practicing. Like I have a little a little bud here under my desk, and so if I'm practicing and I really want to hear myself, then I'll turn it on. But uh, you know, that's the beauty of having a, a a quality uh, arch top is that playing it acoustically is just is joyful. So you just sometimes just you and I've made some YouTube videos. People probably like, oh God, would you put an amp on the thing? But you know, I just be sitting there at night playing and like, oh, I should record this, and and it's like no amp. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a special connection with a hollow body, like just. Just playing it, I mean, it, it changes the way you play. It makes you, you know, acoustic playing versus electric ensemble playing. It's 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 practically a different instrument, you know. Yeah, you know, when you have to turn the amp on, you have to turn the amp on then to hear the character of the notes, right? Uh, how you affect that and all of that. But when you are playing an arch top, you're getting that from the guitar, you know, you don't need to, it, it doesn't need to be amplified to, for you to understand that and navigate and negotiate that. So then when you turn the amp on, that's what's going to be coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, yeah. worse. <laughs> I have uh, one more question for you. I, I really enjoyed hearing all your insight on, you seem to be very mindful in, in your decisions at, at, and at a young age too. Like even you're talking about your early twenties. I'm like, man, these are things you could, be thinking about in your like mid thirties, you know, um, what, what are some things that, that you would tell, you know, younger generations of, of jazz guitarists or, or jazz musicians dealing in today's age into, in today's year of, of this major shift of all kinds of things to, to stay rooted in music, um, and, and yet probably to adapt in ways. I'm curious what your insight on that is. Well, you said it. Ultimately, all of this, none of this makes sense. Being a jazz guitar player, like what? What is that? I remember I was on the phone with Schofield one time and he said, what is this? I'm like, what is what? What is this jazz guitar? What are we doing? I'm like, I don't know. We, <laughs> we, we both laughed, but neither one of us stopped, right? So yeah, it's... It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Like there's no, if you do this, you do this and you do this, then it's going to equal that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like actuary science where when you get out of college, you got a job, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's left up to something that we don't really control. Even if, well, maybe some of us, if, if we're, you know, that dogged about how we practice and then we go to the bandstand and we play that, okay, I don't know how that factors into the musicians around us, or maybe we're playing solo. I don't know. But it's never been like that for me. It's always been like a little bit of um, grace involved in mm-hmm. the uh, every situation. So I just say that as soon as you can allow for that, um, the sooner the better. Again, it doesn't, I mean, this is not, advice because I'm not giving you tips on how to do something and, and, you know, actuate success or actuate income, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, perseverance, um, playing with people that are better than you, if they allow you to, you know, I always felt like I was the, probably one of the saddest ones in my group of guys that I would hang out with in New York, but they had, let me play you know they asked me to be around so i was like okay cool figure this yeah. out and get better you know so all of that um finding joy in making music like if you don't have that then what is the purpose right mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, those, those are all intangibles, though. So, you know, I don't know. That's personal work. It's just personal Man, it's stuff. the X factor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But then the other part, like in terms of the pandemic and everything, yeah, I mean, part of just growth in general is about adaptation and expansion. You know, you can't sit still. You can't live in the past. You can't dream too much into it. You know, we have to be in the now. We kind of have to be massaging all sides and working all sides and all those angles to, to just flow and move forward. So, um, well, man, thanks for leading, you know, leading by example. And I mean, always great hearing your playing and, uh, speaking of that, is it okay if we play another recording of yours? Most definitely. Nice. Okay. So this is, my shining hour. Music is those lines. Not like really about guitar. Yeah, you no, know, it just happens to be a guitar. But it's, mm-hmm. that's how it strikes me because it's it's like you're not playing that stuff. You know, like guitar stuff. <laughs> well, wait, can you give that to us one more time for? for yeah. yeah, yeah, right. That was very academic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's that's what it's about, right? It's like what you said earlier, you know, like it's probably just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things I'm I'm definitely gonna take away from this, it's just so it's, a, it's such a great reminder to always be hearing, you know, from the well, from cats like you. Like it's not about outplaying people, it's not about having them as much as you can possibly get together under your fingers. Like it's about the spirit. It's about the tradition. It's about playing with the people around you and really connecting, getting into the melody and, and the harmony and the rhythm, of course, of of this music. And, and uh, you know, Bobby, you're such a heavy cat, man. You're such a deep cat. Thank you so much for uh, spending the time with us. For the listeners, where can they kind of check out and stay up to date with the going-ons in, in your career, Bobby? Um, BobbyBroom.com. And then um, the Facebook page, which is uh, www.facebook.com slash Bobby Brooms page. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on High Action. 
You're the man, and we hope once we get through this pandemic, we will see you on the other side in real life and make you some music all. together one day. That would be terrific. I look terrific. forward to it. I look forward to it. Thank you, guys. All yeah, right. Bobby. All right. Take all care. Right.